Washington Times and Newsmax contributor Kelly Sadler, attorney, Republican strategist for townhall.com, Aaron Elmore back with us, and reporter for The Daily Caller, Brianna Lyman is here. Uh, ladies, good morning. Great to have you all on uh, this morning. Kelly, I'm wondering what you make of this rift. Uh, is this real? And why would The Washington Post write about it if it is? No, I mean, it absolutely is real, and it's been real for a long time. Barack Obama didn't want Joe Biden to run for office. Uh, he never endorsed him. He took a long time to endorse him um, in the 2020 campaign. And it was two years ago. I don't know a lot of people that would agree with that. I mean, unless you don't go to the grocery store or go to the gas station or hear news about the border or worry about your kids learning critical race theory in school and see young kids uh, having gender reassignment surgery instead of dealing with the angst of being a teenager. No, our country is doing horribly awful right now. And we have so many problems in this country. No one who's actually paying attention thinks that we are in a better place than we were two years ago. And by the way, I forgot to mention soaring inflation. We have real problems here in the United States, and hopefully the midterms are gonna be the best way to rectify these problems and get America back on the right track. Brianna, agree, disagree? Is there really a problem between these two camps? I mean, these are right now, these are the leaders of the Democratic Party. Yeah, I wouldn't even go so far as to say that uh, Joe Biden is a leader of the Democratic Party. I think Obama obviously has a stronghold. He did make a comment yesterday. He said that some of his former staffers were still working with Joe Biden. So I think that goes to show you just how much of an influence Obama is having on the Biden team. Her, She likes to have a voice out there, be a voice out there in American politics. Aaron, is she running in 24? No, she's going to make room for Michelle Obama, of course. Do you believe um, that? Because a lot of people say that, that, that she's going to swoop in at the last minute as soon as Biden says he's not running after the midterms. I mean, a lot of people were worried about that last time around. So mm -hmm. I do think that she would be a big threat to any Republican candidate because she is so well liked amongst that contingent. So I do think that's quite possible. But I think with her words on The View, she's trying to protect herself legally because she knows about her secret server and smashing phones and hard drives and documents that were classified in improper places. So maybe she's taking it a little easy on President Trump because she's kept herself of being indicted. Yeah, I did think it was interesting. Sonny Hostein, um, who's on The View now, she says that Donald Trump was a legitimate president. Uh, she said it was a mistake. This is because Democrats, Brianna, are getting so much pushback for saying the 2016 yeah. election was not legitimate. So now they're circling the wagons and saying suddenly that, no, Donald Trump's election was legit. Russia was not involved. Um, is this a tactic, do you think, that will work as we get closer to the midterms? Do people buy it? I don't think anybody who has, uh, you know, maybe four years of memory recollection will buy it. Haley runs, she might get elected. Michelle Obama runs, she yeah. might get elected. Hillary Clinton, the only woman that's made it that far, that became the nominee, she was a bad candidate. And we talk about Q score and TV, where, which is your likability. Yeah. Nobody liked Hillary Clinton. She's got a really bad Q score, very unlikable. She was a bad candidate. That's why she didn't get elected. America doesn't hate women. All right, we'll leave it there. We'll pick this back up top of the hour. Thanks. We'll see you soon. Appreciate it. Alex? Millions watch it for free. So can you. No Max contributor Kelly Sadler, Republican strategist and columnist for townhall.com, Aaron Elmore, and reporter for The Daily Caller, Brianna Lyman. Uh, Aaron, we'll start with you. Uh, moved to Florida from Pennsylvania. You know a lot about the politics there. Uh, this guy had a stroke two days before the primary, lieutenant governor in Pennsylvania. The Senate deadlocked at 50 50. This is such an important race. He's going to debate Dr. Oz, after all. What do you make of that? Well, the problem is, is I believe the debate is set to take place after early voting has already began. Yep. So the importance of this, I wish it was happening earlier, but I really want all Pennsylvania voters to know that John Fetterman is a far left extremist. He is not that blue collar, middle of the road guy. He's a trust fund brat in a hoodie trying to pretend he's a man of the people. He never really even had a job well into his 40s. Then he destroyed the town of Braddock, Pennsylvania, which was an old coal and steel town in western Pennsylvania near where I grew up. Um, he supported Bernie Sanders. He put energy caps on the town, which drove population down even further. He's basically as extreme as you can get. He has a little bit of a tarnished image because he chased an African-American jogger down the street with a gun, right. thinking that he was a home intruder. This guy's a bad guy and bad for Pennsylvania. Anyone in Pennsylvania who's even thinking about voting for this guy really needs to do their homework and realize he is not what you need for the great state of Pennsylvania, the fifth largest state in the country with such a rich history and such a beautiful you know, area of, of the world. We need better and we need Dr. Oz, who is a really good guy. He's come under a lot of attack for things that aren't really true. Right. He's a big 2A guy. He's 
you know, big into the right to life. Dr. Oz is a good man and he will be great for the state of Pennsylvania and for the country. Well, he's a great American success story as well. Uh, the yeah. embodiment of the American dream. Brianna, this- So he didn't just have a stroke. From what I understand, he also has a pacemaker and a defibrillator. And I spoke to a Pennsylvania-based heart surgeon who was, by the way, not a conservative. Right. He said, this guy is in really bad health just given those three maladies right there, that this is quite serious and that sometimes in the media, they're even playing this down. He's very sick. Okay, I so- I, we brought this up yesterday, but this I've never seen this before, and I've been at it for a while. Um, John Fetterman gave a speech, and the network that covered it locally provided subtitles to his speech. No. This is a candidate campaigning, and there were subtitles on the screen, and you didn't have to hit the button on your clicker to get those subtitles. There were subtitles on the screen. Okay, just want to get to this quickly. Uh, Ron DeSantis with a very well-produced campaign ad in Florida. Take a look. Ladies and gentlemen, Governor Ron DeSantis. Today, we deliver for the people of Florida yet again. We saved our jobs. Brianna, so this doesn't look like an ad for somebody that's running for governor. This looks like an ad for somebody that's running for president. Um, and there. Thanks, Rob. Here's what we're watching for today. Well, President Biden. Commentary editor for The Washington Times and Newsmax contributor Kelly Sadler, Republican strategist and columnist for townhall.com, also a Florida resident, Aaron Elmore, and reporter for The Daily Caller, Brianna Lyman. Um, we were talking about this last hour, but Aaron, three points, that is a little too close for comfort. I, I think everyone thinks that in purple Florida, I think Florida's red, by the way, Republican governor, red. two Republican senators, a lot of Republican mayors in big cities. Um, what do you make of this poll? It's terrifying. Um, if you've heard any of the words that Charlie Crist has said in the last two weeks, they're absolutely not only really cringy to be informal, but he's saying things, how great of a job Joe Biden is doing and how he considers him a friend. And he wants him down here in Florida to campaign with him. And we in Florida don't want that. That's why so many people have flocked to the great free state of Florida. Governor DeSantis kept our state open. He kept our kids free from critical race theory and indoctrination in school. He's been so great for the economy, public safety, anything, you name it, Governor DeSantis has been great. But if you do look at Governor DeSantis's cash on hand versus Charlie Crist, there is no competition. DeSantis is completely in the clear. Yeah. This is only one poll, but it's definitely alarming. I don't mean to put on a tinfoil hat here, but someone very high up in politics told me that they, whoever they are, are going to try to take Florida back for the Democrats, and this might be an attempt. But I will tell you this, Governor DeSantis. Wait, Aaron, we're all, we're all friends here. It's just us talking. It's just it's just the four of us. Who, I don't who drop is this? Any names, who is this unnamed high up source? <laughs> sound, we sound like the Washington Post when we don't name our sources. Well, I'm not a real journalist. I'm just a talking head over here. Oh, so I, okay. I'm, I'm allowed. Bingo. But having said that, Governor DeSantis wants these elections to be completely transparent. Right. He wants to have it be one vote, one person ID. So on election day, we will know exactly who won, and we will make sure that it is fair and just. Okay. Um, Kelly, let's just talk brass tacks here. Politics. 1998, George Bush, huge win in Texas. He was governor. That springboarded him into the nomination in 2000. Uh, go back to 1958, JFK in Massachusetts. Knew he wanted to be president in 1960. Huge win in Massachusetts, 1960, uh, in his second Senate race there. Um, Aaron, I'm keeping an eye on Florida, though. Democrats I'm want worried. it. They want to steal I, I, it. Yeah. They want to steal it. They're not going to. Uh, I mean, no. I really think that F Ron DeSantis has been the guy that was sort of bucked the whole system. I know. He kept Florida open. And if you can take out Ron DeSantis, you can take out democracy. Gosh, can you imagine that? All right, 61 days to go. Where until am I going to move next? We will <laughs> back to back to Philadelphia. I hope not. No. Um, Wiz Wid. All right, Aaron Elmore. Wiz thanks. Wid. Good stuff. Pats and Genos. Uh, let's move on to. Our